Okay, uh, good afternoon po, ma'am. Good afternoon po, everyone. Can everyone sh uh, see the screen? Yes po, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon po. Sir. Hello, good afternoon. So, um, what I'm going to lecture right now is general properties of viruses. Uh, before mo na yun, uh, take note lang na ang virology and mycology sa board exam is usually only mga less than five items. So, while it is true na five items lang sila, um, the mere fact na they contribute to the number of points na kailangan yung i-aim para makapasa sa micro ng board exam is still important. So, uh, what I'm going to lecture right now is uh, the more, are the most important na facts and informations that we're going to tackle in the general properties of viruses. So, before ako mag-proceed sa PowerPoint, uh, I'd like to share some uh, things to uh, things that are not present in the PowerPoint. So, yung ano, yung first is your viral replication. So, viral replication. Uh, this is the one of the major na, ano, na pathophysiologic mechanism ng viruses in order for them to spread their infection inside the body. So before we proceed with viral replication, uh, the first question is, are viruses considered as living things? Uh, that is half yes and that is half no. So uh, viruses cannot be considered as living things if they are outside host cells. So they remain dormant, they remain as non-living things outside host cells. But once they enter inside the host cells, then that's the time then they that they will become living things. And the mere fact that the viral replication is the one that decides or that describes the viruses as living things because of these uh, different steps sa viral replication. So for viral replication, uh, ang mnemonics dyan is apong VR. So... Uh, first is yung first step is your attachment. So viruses, of course, in order for them to invade host cells, first they should attach to the cell membrane of the host. So yun lang basically yung ibig sabihin ng attachment dito. The viruses will have specific rece uh, cellular receptors which are found inside the or outside the host cells, uh, particularly on the cell surface. So, ito yung cell surface, then may receptor dyan. Then, the virus will uh, recognize a specific receptor para mag-bind doon sa uh, host cell natin. So, that is primarily your attachment. So, for second is your penetration. So, apong VR, AP. So, uh, penetration. So, in penetration process, the virus now enters the host cell using the, the cellular receptor that is bound to that virus. So, yun yung, ano, yun yung um, for, um, step na kung saan papasok na yung virus sa loob ng host cell. Kasi basically, um, viruses are actually intracellular parasites. Eh. Viruses are intracellular parasites that attempt to invade yung host cells natin causing now your cytopathic effects. Pag sinabing cytopathic effects, uh, these are uh, different mechanisms that occur in such a way na masisira yung cells ng ating katawan. So, uh, virus will, will now penetrate the cell membrane of the host. So, that is the second process in the viral replication. The third uh, step is your uncoating. Later on, I-discuss natin yung different parts ng isang virus. Pero uncoating here stands for the fact that uh, viruses will release will release its nucleic acid. So yung virus ngayon, upon entering the host cell, will, re will release its uh, nucleic acid. And this nucleic acid will be incorporated into the uh, DNA of the host cell. Sorry, sorry. DNA of the host cell. So, yan. 
the nucleic acids will incorporate themselves into the DNA of the host cell. So using now the nucleic acid, which is found inside the DNA of the host cell, gagamitin niya ngayon yung, yung three, three, centa, three central dogma of molecular biology, um, which is yung first is yung uh, DNA synthesis or DNA replication. So, papasok ngayon yung nucleic acid dun sa DNA ng host cell tap or insert ng sarili niya. So, upon entering the, ano, the DNA of the host cell, kumbaga mag-undergo ng replication process yung cell sa DNA. So, that's one step. Then, the second is your transcription. So, yung um, tawag ba dun? Yung RNA, messenger RNA ng host cell will now read will now read yung DNA na or yung nucleic acid na naipasok galing sa virus. So transcription transcription and then the third step is the translation. So the virus or the viral nucleic acid will now be translated into a protein. So ganun yung ano ganun yung ganun yung paano ginagamit ng virus yung host cell for them to replicate so they're going to use the different um, parts of the cell for them to produce their own macromolecules, particularly your proteins. So that is for your, ano, that is for your central dogma of molecular biology. Yung viruses gagamitin nila tong tatlong steps na to para magreplicate sila, and which is being uh, explained now by the fourth process, which is your macro molecular synthesis. So, yung virus nga, gagamitin niya yung central dogma. And then, ilang beses mangyayari tong uh, three processes na to until such time na dumami sila. So, that's how viruses uh, replicate. Uh, now, for the fourth step, macromolecular synthesis. So, magsisynthesize yung ngayon yung cells natin ng different uh, macromolecules which are beneficial to the virus protein or virus particle, I should say. So that's for your fourth step. For the fifth step, viral assembly. So in this step, uh, yung mga different macromolecules which are synthesized in the fourth step will attach or will assemble into a virus part or a viral particle which is termed as virion. So this is the complete this is the term used for the complete uh, viral particle na um galing dun sa different processes that occurred inside the host cell. So viral assembly. And last is the release. So pag dumami na yung mga virus na nagawa, lalabas niya sila sa host cell causing the so causing cellular destruction and will attempt to invade other host cells. So a quick recap on the viral replication, APUM VR, attachment, penetration, uncoating, uh, macromolecular synthesis, viral assembly, and release. So that's for your viral replication. Now a quick recap also on specimen processing of viruses. Um, did you follow? Nakakafollow ba dun sa viral replication? Everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so proceed tayo sa specimen processing for viruses. Ah, uh, konti lang yung kailangan yung alamin dito. So, most of the time, ah, uh, yung routine na available for us to detect these uh, certain viruses that are invading the body is serological testing. So, ito yung routine na, na tests na ginagamit for uh, detecting the presence of viral infections. So may encounter nyo to later on sa serology subject nyo. Uh, pero ang kailangan nyo ng tandaan for serological testing is that uh, for processing of antibodies which are found in the serum of the patient, they should be uh, stored at negative 20 degrees. So, so yung, ano, yung antibodies for serological testing are usually stored at 20 negative 20 degrees Celsius. For storage naman, uh, I'm sorry, this is not for storage. This is for st serological testing na mismo. 
uh, negative 20 degrees Celsius ang kanilang specimen processing. For storage naman of uh, different viruses, usually 4 degrees Celsius. And for transport, this is usually negative 70 degrees for several days. Okay. Now, uh, there are diff there are other uh, methods which are used to detect uh, viruses, but these are not usually routine. So, madalas minsan nasa reference laboratory sila ano, pinapasa din for um, processing na nung specimen. So, one includes your electron microscopy. So, while it is true that this is not a routine method kasi wala naman masyadong electron microscope sa ating lab, um, this one is the most rapid method for detecting viruses. So, si electron microscopy yan. Uh, electron microscopy utilizes negative staining technique. So, pag sinabi yung negative staining, Pag sinabing negative staining, instead of the actual uh, object that is being stained inside the uh, slide, ang ini-stain ng negative staining natin would be the background. So, ang purpose naman ng staining procedures is that it provides contrast between the background and the object being observed. So, yun naman yung main purpose ng staining. Eh. So, in this case, uh, negative staining usually... Uh, provides color to the background in order to give contrast to the specimen observed. So negative staining yung, yung ginagamit na process in electron microscopy for detecting viruses. So another method now utilized is your tissue culture. So for tissue culture, there are different types of cells Usually, uh, cancer cells ang ginagamit dito in order to uh, cultivate viruses. So, for tissue culture, we have the we have the following. First, we have your A549. So, isa tong cell na, uh, cell na ginagamit for lung carcinoma. I mean, galing siya sa cancer cells of the lungs. So, yun yung ibig kong sabihin. A549 cells. Uh, this come from uh, lung carcinoma na, na cancer. So, A549 cells. Next, we also have your HELA cells. So, HELA cells come from cervical carcinoma. Particularly, kinuha nila to sa patient na may pangalang Henrietta Lacks. So, cervical carcinoma. Um, Henrietta Sensya na yun yung sulat ko ah. Lux Yan. Henrietta Lux Hela cells uh, Come from cervical carcinoma Because itong patient na to Nagsasuffer siya from uh, Nagsuffer siya from cervical cancer And upon death Kinuha ng scientist yung um, Cancer cell niya sa, ano, sa, sa cervix So naging Hela cells na siya Next we have also your HEP2 cell. So HEP2 cell is uh, coming from your laryngeal carcinoma. So cancer of the larynx. So pag sinabing HEP2, yung ibig sabihin ng H dito, human, yung ibig sabihin ng F dito is epithelial cell. So human epithelial 2 cell. So yun yung ibig sabihin ng HEP2 cell natin. Uh, which comes from your laryngeal carcinoma. I'm not particularly sure what A549 means, pero uh, I'm sure that these cells come from lung carcinoma. Then HELA cell, Henrietta Lacks cells, plus HEP2 cell, uh, human epithelial cells too. Tapos, we also have your human fibroblast cell. So basically, they come from the fibroblasts ng human. So pag sinabi kasi yung fibroblasts, these are um, one of the major na connective tissue cell 
which um, produces now your collagen. So uh, particularly, these human fibroblast cells are used for the cultivation of uh, cytomegalovirus or CMV. Cytomegalovirus. Yan. We also have your vero cells, which comes from African African green uh, monkey kidney cells. So, yan. So, we also have uh, another tissue culture na ginagamit is McCoy cells. Kaya ko sila ni-red kasi mataas yung chance na lalabas sila sa, ano, sa uh, board exam. And as early as now, mas maganda na ma-orient kayo dito sa mga different tissue cultures natin na ginagamit for viruses. So, McCoy cells, um, these are coming from mouse cell line. Uh, particularly, hindi siya ginagamit madalas for viruses, but these McCoy cells are usually being used for chlamydia. Since chlamydia are miscellaneous bacteria which are intracellular. So, they 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 do not grow particularly on routine culture media, but they grow on cell culture, which is specifically now your McCoy cells. Tapos, uh, we also have your chick embryo. Uh, which is used for uh, viruses and rickettsia. So, ulitin lang natin. We have your A549 cells, lung carcinoma, HELA cells, cervical carcinoma, which uh, comes from the patient named Henrietta Lacks, HEP2 cell or human epithelial cell 2, uh, laryngeal carcinoma, human fibroblast cells are used for cytomegalovirus or CMV, Vero cells come from African green monkey kidney cells, McCoy cells come from mouse cell line, uh, which are used for chlamydia and chick embryo cells, which are used for viruses and uh, rickettsia. So, uh, yan, yan, yung, ano, yan yung general laboratory procedures for us to detect now your viruses. So, for the serological tests, there are different types of serological tests, pero i-discuss na lang sa inyo yun sa, sa uh, serology topic. But for now, it's good to know na detection of viruses usually uh, serological tests are the routine methods used. So, yun. Now, uh, proceed na tayo sa PowerPoint. I just borrowed this PowerPoint from Sir Raymel. So, nagpaalam naman lang sa kanya. So, what we're going to discuss right now are the general properties of viruses. So, one of the general property of virus na na-discuss ko kanina is your viral replication, which is uh, usually common sa lahat ng ating viruses. So, uh, these viruses are smallest infectious agents, uh, but there are actually some references which state that prions or prions are much smaller compared to your viruses. So, viruses are usually 20 nanometers to 300 nanometers in diameter. Uh, let's also take note that viruses are your filtrable Nagikita nyo ba yung PowerPoint? Yes po. Okay, okay. Sige. So, viruses are your filterable agents. Meaning, uh, pag sinabing filterable agents, hindi sila yung nafi-filter. Ah. Ibig sabihin, sila yung nakakapasok sa mga uh, biological safety cabinet na filters natin. Particularly your HEPA filter. High efficiency particulate air. So, these viruses easily uh, penetrate yung uh, filters natin sa biosafety cabinet. That's why they are called as your filterable agents, uh, viruses. So given that they are 20 nanometers to uh, 300 nanometers in diameter, ang um, kaya lang i-filter out ng ating HEPA filter is greater than 0.3 micrometer. 
And 0.3 micrometer is 300 nanometers kung i-convert nyo. So, 0.3 uh, micrometer, yung greater than 0.3 micrometer lang ang kayang i-filter out ng uh, HEPA filters natin. Given that viruses can be less than 0.3 in uh, diameter, they can easily filter inside the HEPA filters. So, yun yung another general characteristic na ating viruses. So, they contain only one kind of nucleic acid. So, it can only be either be DNA or RNA. Hindi pwedeng both. Uh, pagkitandaan yun, only DNA or RNA. Hindi pwedeng both. So, again, uh, I discussed a while back that they are inert sa extracellular environment. Meaning, they are non-living things extracellularly. But when you introduce them inside the host cell, nagiging living things sila. So, yan. Replicate only in living uh, cells. So, viruses can be uh, can vary greatly in structure. So, but, syempre, hindi, hindi pwedeng uh, hindi sila mag-vary sa genome, organization, and strategies of replication and transmission. So, yung apong VR kanina, those are your general um, processes sa viral replication. But each of them has their own unique way on how to replicate inside the host cell. So, kumbaga, yun lang yung general na processes na nag-occur for each viruses. So, um, pwede, nga, pwede sila mag-cause ng uh, severe na diseases, pwede mild, or pwede they, they cannot uh, they cannot cause disease at all. So, yun. So, for the different terminologies, uh, ito na yung mga different structures which are found in your uh, viruses. So, capsid is a protein shell which encloses now your nucleic acid. So, kumbaga, uh, ito yung nucleic acid ng, ano, ng virus which is enclosed by a capsid. So, um, yung ano, yung, yung, there are different symmetrical patterns sa ating capsid. No? We have your icosahedral. Wherein yung, ano, wherein yung itsura ng, ng capsid natin is hexagonal in structure. So, icosahedral yan. We also have your helical. Wherein yung capsid is usually parang rod shape. So parang ganyan. Tapos enclosing now your nucleic acid. We also have your complex. So pag sinabing complex, uh, hindi mo mawari yung actual na shape niya. Parang uh, yun nga, it is a complex uh, shape which uh, encloses your nucleic acid. So those are the different symmetries found uh, inside each viruses no? sa capsid natin. So, capsomeres naman, these are clusters of polypeptides. Uh, but, they, but they do not necessarily correspond to the chemically defined structural units. So, capsid, uh, pag ano, pag, ang tawag dito sa buong structure na to is nucleocapsid. Nucleocapsid. So, it means to say na it is a structure which is composed of a capsid and a nucleic acid. Nucleocapsid. So, pero yung capsomere, um, basta ang point lang dito is they represent clusters of polypeptides. But they do not usually correspond to the chemically defined structural units. So, yun. It can be part of capsid. Pero yun nga. Defective virus is a particle that is functionally deficient in some aspect of replication. So, kumbaga, these are viruses which do not usually um, pagodun, complete themselves. Uh, they are defective, kumbaga. One example there is yung nangyayari sa measles virus. Uh, particularly when there is a problem in vaccination. So, i-discuss yan later on. Measles virus. Basta one example of defective virus is your measles virus. Now, in some viruses, uh, this structure is present or this structure can be absent. 
So this envelope here is a lipid containing membrane that surrounds some virus particles. So itong envelope, this, come, this may come from the cell membrane of the host. So yan. Pag luma, for example, uh, balik tayo sa, ano, sa whiteboard. For example, uh, ito yung cell membrane. Tapos nag-replicate na yung virus. Nag-replicate na yung virus. Pag lalabas siya ng host cell, pwede niyang kunin yung portion ng cell membrane ng host cell. Kaya magiging result niyan is ganito. So meron na siyang envelope. Now, question. Um, is envelope usually more protective than those uh, viruses which are not envelope? Again, so another question is, uh, yung envelope ba, mas nakakatulong ba siya sa pag-protect sa viruses compared sa mga viruses which do not uh, contain envelope? So the answer there is usually hindi helpful ang envelope sa viruses which um, which is not usually protective compared to your non-envelope. Why? Because envelope viruses, these are usually labile. Keep labile. Basically because uh, they are encased by lipid membrane. And usually lipids are uh, usually lipids are offering more susceptibility to heat compared to sa non-envelope na viruses. So they are usually heat labile and they are ether sensitive. So they, these envelope viruses now are more susceptible sa uh, disinfectants or sterilants compared now to your non-envelope viruses. Ulitin ko ha. Baka magkamali kayo dun sa notion na pag sinabing may envelope eh doesn't mean na mas Resistansya, no. Uh, envelope viruses usually are sensitive to ether and labile to heat as compared to your non-envelope viruses. So yun yung ano, yun, sana huwag kayo malito dun. Basta pag sinabing envelope viruses, uh, this So, yun. Some viruses naman uh, contain glycoprotein spikes. So, one example is your HIV. And these glycoprotein spikes are being utilized for their um, attachment to the host cell. So, pwede nilang gamitin yan as a uh, method for attachment to the host cell, yung glycoprotein spikes natin. Now, uh, some terminologies which are usually... Uh, medyo hindi masyado mahalaga. So peplomers, uh, ito yung viruses which encode na glycoproteins. So peplomers are glycoproteins which are encoded by viruses. So usually nasa envelope siya. So yan. Ito yung, ito yung peplomer and these usually are used to attach to the host cell. Peplomer. Nucleocapsid, nabanggit ko na kanina. Nucleic acid plus capsid. Structural units, so uh, this is are the basic protein building blocks of the coat and yung subunit is a single folded viral polypeptide chain. Virion is a complete virus particle, which uh, nasabi ko na tong term na to kanina. So um, this may, basta pag sinabing virion, pwede nang basta meron siyang uh, DNA or RNA or nucleic acid, meron din siyang capsid. So, hindi mawawala yan sa isang virion. Itong dalawang to. It is a complete virus particle. So, yun. Uh, papiloma viruses, picorna viruses. So, ang sabi dito, virion is identical with the nucleocapsid. So, ibig sabihin nito, uh, these are, these do not require envelope. 
So parang nucleocapsid lang sapat na para mag matawag silang virion. Uh, we also have your herpes virus and orthomyxoviruses. So they are nucleocapsid with envelope naman. So masasabi natin na these viruses are envelope viruses. Uh, Nakaka-follow pa ba so far? Yes, sir. Okay. So there are some theories on how virus originates no? or how virus are made. So given na meron daw silang DNA or RNA, they usually come from uh, host cells that are able to replicate autonomously. So kumbaga may sarili na silang mundo. Nag-separate yung nucleic acid na yan, tapos uh, nagsarili sila. Then parang ganun daw yung, yung isa sa theory on how viruses uh, are made. So... They can also be uh, degenerate forms of intracellular parasites. Meaning, um, tulad nung sinabi ko kanina, uh, they are usually intracellular parasites in origin na kung saan pwede silang nanggaling sa mga different pathogens, other, uh, other types of pathogens that invade the host cell. So, kumbaga, uh, parang ano daw, na attach sila dun sa host cell pumasok sila sa loob ng cell then uh, sa kasalukuyan na ano na nagii-invade sila sa loob ng host cell parang may na detach na na nucleic acid and dun lumab dun pumasok yung viruses so yun yung isa sa theory na nag-explain sa viral origin properties. So, um, while it is true na yung viruses, they are uh, classified as either living or non-living, they are still uh, taxonomically classified according to their families, according to their genera and their order. So, pag sinabing order, virales yung suffix. Pero we do, you usually do not use this one. We usually start with the family. Uh, which usually ends with viridae. So flavi viridae, picorna viridae. Pag may nabinig kayong viridae, it means to say family tetrocoy. Uh, subfamily, virinae. Tapos genera, virus. And species. So yun. So these are the tables that are lifted from Jowets. Yan. So ito yung mga different structures ng, ng DNA viruses natin. Ang mahalaga dito is your pax, polyoma, papiloma, adeno, parvo, herpes, and epadna. So, yan yung mga mahalagang viruses. The others, uh, kahit huwag nyo nang, ano, huwag nyo nang masyadong bigyan ng pansin. Basta ang mahalaga is itong na-check na seven. For your RNA viruses naman, so ito mahalaga, retroviridae, rhabdoviridae, which causes your rabies, orthomyxoviridae, which uh, usually is your influenza viruses, rheoviridae, uh, paramyxoviridae, so arenaviridae, bunyaviridae, phyloviridae. So itong uh, phyloviridae or phyloviridae, ito yung uh, Ebola viruses natin. Hepaviridae, caliciviridae, picornaviridae, flavi, toga, and your corona. So, syempre, uh, alam naman natin ngayon na uh, isa sa nagkukos ngayon ng pandemic is your coronavirus 19, COVID-19. So, under sila sa corona viridae. Uh, before we proceed with your DNA viruses, bigyan ko kayo ng mnemonics, mga general characteristics ng ating uh, DNA viruses. DNA viruses. 
So they are usually DS DNA, double stranded DNA. They are usually icosahedral. So lahat ng DNA viruses are double stranded DNA and icosahedral except So wait lang. Except Parvo viridae. Parvovirus, Parvo viridae. So except Parvo viridae. Why? Parvoviridae is single-stranded DNA virus. And yung symmetry niya sa capsid is usually complex. Nepad na viridae. Uh, Papova viridae. You also have your papilloma. Ay, parvo, I should say parvo. We also have your adeno viridae. And we also have your polioma ay pax viridae pala. So again, herpes viridae, hepadna viridae, papova viridae, uh, par parvo viridae, adeno viridae and your pax viridae. Si papova kasi siya yung na-combine na na ano eh, na papilloma. And uh venous viridae ah, chinot ko na lang. polioma. So we have your herpes viridae, hepadna viridae, papova viridae, which uh, subclassified as papilloma viridae and polioma viridae. You also have your parvo viridae, adeno viridae, and pax viridae. So yan. Yan yung DNA viruses natin. Seven, uh, one, two, three, four, six lang sila. Six DNA viruses wherein yung papova is subclassified under papilloma viridae and polioma viridae. Kindly, uh, Kindly take note of the mnemonics. Okay, hey, papa-add po. So for envelope, meron din tayong mnemonics dyan. Okay, hey, hey, po. Yan. We have your, yung dalawang he, herpes viridae. We have your hepadna viridae and your pax viridae. We also have in your non-envelope, naman is yung paad pa. So, for your paad pa, uh, papova viridae. We also have your ad uh, adeno viridae. We also have your parvo viridae. So, yan. We, uh, all of these DNA viruses replicate within nucleus except except your uh, Pax viridae. Si Pax Viridae nagre-replicate siya sa cytoplasm. Yan. So Pax Viridae nagre-replicate siya sa cytoplasm. Wait lang. So yun. 
Ayan. Ito yung general properties ng ating DNA viruses. We have your DSDNA except uh, parvoviridae. I call sa hydral except parvoviridae. Kasi si parvoviridae, single-stranded DNA siya and complex. Ngayon, um, DNA viruses can be classified as enveloped, which is hehepo, herpes viridae, hepadna viridae, pax viridae. Nang enveloped naman, paad pa, papova viridae, adenoviridae, and parvo viridae. So, yun. Replicate within nucleus, except pax viridae, because they replicate in the cytoplasm. Now, um, we also have your smallest DNA virus. Smallest DNA virus, which is your... Uh, tawag mo doon? Parvoviridae. So, tatlo na yung alam natin kay parvoviridae. Siya ay single-stranded. Siya ay complex symmetry. And siya na rin yung smallest DNA viruses. Actually, parvoviridae is uh, now considered as smaller compared to your picornaviridae sa RNA natin. Kaya si parvoviridae ngayon yung smallest virus known to man. So, hindi lang siya classified as smallest DNA. Siya na rin yung smallest viruses known to man. Now, we also have your largest DNA virus. And this largest DNA virus is also your largest virus known to man. So, ang, ano, ang largest DNA virus natin is your Pax viridae. Uh, viridae. Yan. So, tatlo na yung alam natin kay parvoviridae, single-stranded DNA and complex in nature. And it is also the smallest virus known to man. Smallest DNA na rin siya. The largest DNA virus or uh, largest virus known to man also is your Pax viridae. Tapos, ang alam na din natin kay Pax viridae is siya rin ay envelope. Of course, given na uh, isa lang naman ang naiiba dito sa general characteristics na yan, Pax viridae is also your double-stranded DNA and icosahedral uh, symmetry. And it is also envelope. So, yun yung kailangan natin alamin kay Pax viridae. Uh, more details later on sa kanila. So, ito yung general characteristics or general properties ng ating DNA viruses. Any question? May tanong po ba? Wala, na. Wala po, sir. Okay. So, proceed na tayo sa mga different uh, DNA-containing viruses. No? Parvoviridae. So, tatlo na yung alam natin sa kanya. So, ano na ulit yung tatlo? Pakirecite naman. Parvoviridae is... Single-stranded single, DNA. Okay, single-stranded. Tapos... Complex complex smallest virus known to man. Smallest yes, nice. DNA virus and smallest virus known to man. Nice, nice. So, smallest DNA virus. Ngayon, uh, particle size niya is 18 to 26 nanometers. Pero usually, ang parvoviruses are less than 20 nanometers. So, para mas pinapala itong 18. Pero nevertheless, uh, hindi na mahalaga sa pag, sa ating pag-aaral ang mga particle size nila. Ang mahalaga na ang mahalaga is alam natin na parvoviruses are your smallest DNA viruses known to man. And of course, yung smallest virus na rin. So, no envelope. Sakto lang, di ba? Kasi non-envelope siya kanina, paad pa. So, parvoviruses. Um, Single-stranded DNA. Yan. Hindi lang siya na-emphasize dito, pero uh, actually siya lang naman yung nag-iisang single-stranded DNA. Okay, so one parvovirus na associated na species dito is your human parvovirus B19. So ang kailangan natin alamin sa kanya is that uh, it replicates in immature erythroid cells. So kung um, ma-recall natin sa HEMA, your immature erythroid cells contains now your uh, normoblasts. No? So your pronormoblasts, your basophilic normoblast, your polychromatophilic normoblast, your orthochromic normoblast, uh, 
and yung ano reticulocytes basta mga immature erythroid cells so di, so in short uh, parvovirus b19 infects your bone marrow so matatandaan niyo na syempre since immature erythroid cells are only found in your bone marrow alam na rin natin na parvovirus b19 attempts to infect your bone marrow so b4 bone marrow and yun yung kailangan niyo tandaan sa kanya so another thing to consider pagdating kay parvovirus B19 is that uh, pag may narinig kayong slap chick appearance slap chick tinampal na pisngi so ang una nating iisipin diyan is yung parvovirus B19 okay so slap chick appearance yan now uh, parvovirus B19 is also included in the six na known na childhood exanthems natin so um, di ko sure if na-discuss na sa inyo, pero sabihin ko na lang. Your six childhood exanthems are your first, rubiola. So, rubiola is caused by rubiola virus or uh, measles virus. Second is your scarlet fever. So, because of, sa, ano, sa bakte, sino yung nagkakos ng scarlet fever? Sino yung kilala nyo nagkakos ng scarlet fever? Causative agent of scarlet fever. C? Streptococcus pyogenes. So, siya yung second na, um, siya yung second na, ano, na known na childhood exanthem. No? Ang common sa lahat ng exanthem nito is that they all causes, they all cause skin rashes. So, rashes, kumbaga. Yan yung common sa kanilang anin. So for your third is your rubella. So rubella is caused by rubella virus of course. Fourth is your uh ang tawag na sa kanya ngayon is staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. SSSS staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome or your Ritter's syndrome. Formerly known as your Ritter syndrome yun, Formerly known as your Pilato Dux syndrome. Pilato Dux D-U-K-E syndrome. So staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome caused by none other than your staph aureus. Sa U. Fifth childhood exanthem is itong si parvovirus B19. Ang tawag sa kinokos niya is erythema nodosum. So yan. And your sixth childhood exanthem is, uh, didiscuss later, si Rosciola infantum. So, ito yung kinokos ni parvovirus B19, ha? si Erythema nodosum. Parvovirus B19. Okay. So, 6 is your Rosciola infantum, your human herpes virus type 6. Siya yung nagkukos dyan. So, para hindi kayo, no, para hindi kayo ma... Para hindi nyo makalimutan, HHV6. So, siya yung 6 childhood exanthem, which is your Rosciola infantum. So, first uh, first exanthem is your rubiola caused by your measles virus. So, measles. Uh, second is your scarlet fever caused by your streptococcus pyogenes. Third is your rubella. Fourth is your SSSS, Staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome caused by Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, Rater syndrome, ang other term niya, or yung previous term niya is Philatodox. Fifth is your Erythema nodosum, uh, which is caused, yun, yun nga, yung topic natin ngayon, parvovirus B19. And your sixth na exanthem is your Rosciola infantum, caused by your human herpes virus type 6. Okay? 
So, yan silang anim. Ah, may other term pa pala itong Rosyola Infantum. Ang other term nitong Rosyola Infantum is your Exantem Subitum. Yan. Rosyola Infantum or Exantem Subitum. Caused by HHV6. Some references also include 7, HHV7, Human Herpes Virus 7, pero usually si 6 yan. So, Human Herpes Virus 6 or 7 causes your Rosyola Infantum or Exantem Subitum. Okay? So, yan o, oh, 50 cis. Fifth Exantem. A plastic crisis din kasi yun nga, Ah, uh, sinisira niya yung erythroid cells before they mature. So, si parvovirus B19 yan. Next, we also have your anello virus. Pero, um, for me lang, ang mahalaga lang dito sa slide na to is your torquetenio virus. Yun lang. Yun lang kailangan yung tandaan dyan. Uh, kung papansin niyo hindi natin siya sinama dun sa remonics kanina. Kasi, anello viruses does not usually cause disease. Yan, no? Ang mahalaga lang dito ay si Torquetenio virus. Enye. Torquetenio virus. Yun lang. Next, we have your polyoma virus. So, polyoma virus, uh, maalala nyo kung saan siya naka-classify kanina? Ano yung classification ni polyoma kanina? Doon sa DNA viruses natin? Hello? Papova, sir. Papova okay, viridae. Tama. So, polyoma viruses are classified under your Papova viridae or Papova virus. So, um, tawag mo polyoma virus is under siya kay Papova. And ang alam natin kay, ano, kay uh, Papova is that it is non-envelope. Yan o, no? non-envelope. So, pag non-envelope siya, malamang heat-stable siya and uh, ether-resistant. Yan. So, um, tawag mo dun? Uh, polyoma viruses usually have, syempre kung kanina DSDNA siya. Kasi isa lang naman yung SSDNA. Isa lang din naman yung, ano, yung complex. So, usually icosahedral siya or cubic symmetry. Pero ang other term na kasi icosahedral. Eh. Icosahedral symmetry. Double-stranded. So, yun lang. Kailangan tandaan. DNA viruses are DSDNA except kay Parvo Viridae, which is uh, single-stranded. So, lahat na nang ma-encounter nyo ano, uh, DNA viruses are usually double-stranded. And they are usually icosahedral in nature. And they usually replicate within the nucleus. Except kay Pax Vitae. You know? So, ang kailangan natin tandaan kay polyoma virus is that uh, they are the ones that causes your progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. So, pakitandaan, uh, under sa polyoma virus si JC virus, Ay ibig sabihin ng JC dyan is John Cunningham. John Cunningham. And you also have your BK virus, uh, which causes your hemorrhagic cystitis or nephropathy in transplant recipients. So, yun lang. Ah, si BK, hindi ko alam yung ano, hindi ko alam exactly kung ano ibig sabihin ng BK, pero si JC ang, ano, ang pagkakaturo sa amin dati eh, ang Ibig sabihin ng JC dyan is John Cunningham virus. So, yun. Uh, we also have your Merkel cell virus. So, Merkel cell skin carcinoma. Itong si Merkel cell kasi, uh, kung maalala nyo pa sa histology, Merkel cell is a type of sensory receptor. Found in skin. Receptor in skin. Particularly nakalocate siya sa stratum basale or your, uh, which is part of your epidermis. So, majority of Merkel cell skin carcinoma 
caused by your Merkel cell virus. So Merkel cell is a sensory receptor in skin which detects uh, usually yung touch or pressure and pain. So yun. Uh, SV40, ang ibig sabihin ng SV dito is simian vacuolated virus. Simian. Pag sinabing simian, uh, usually monkey. So, simian vacuolated virus. So, yun. JC virus, BK virus, Merkel cell virus, SV40. Uh, ang kailangan yung tandaan sa general properties of viruses is to Uh, kailangan nyo alamin yung kanilang pagiging single-stranded or double-stranded. You also have to know if they are enveloped or not enveloped. Kasi pag enveloped or not enveloped, malalaman nyo na agad kung heat-stable ba siya or heat-labile or eater-sensitive ba siya or eater-resistant. So, yun yung mahalaga pag malaman nyo kung sino yung mga enveloped and non-enveloped. And also, you have to consider yung symmetry niya sa capsid. So, yun. Kahit yun lang, kahit yun lang kailangan tumatak sa, ano, sa isip nyo. Huwag na yung mga size, huwag na yung 72 caps of mares, huwag na itong mga ganito. Ang mahalaga is yung yun yun nga, yung symmetry niya, yung uh, characteristic ng nucleic acid niya, single strand ba or double strand, DNA ba or RNA, and kung envelope ba siya or not envelope. O, kung replicate ba siya within the nucleus or sa cytoplasm, So, yun yung mga properties na kailangan nyo alamin per virus as you proceed sa different viruses later on. So, papiloma virus is also under your papova. Yan ang tinawag na papova eh. Papiloma polioma. Papova virus. So, papiloma virus, also known as your white viruses. So, ang kailangan natin tandaan kay uh, papiloma viridae, uh, hindi siya naka... Ay, meron na pala. Pero hindi siya specific. Yung regarding kay papiloma viridae, they are usually causative or they are usually associated with cervical cancer. Uh, cervical cancer. And sila din yung responsible sa condyloma acuminatum. Con... Diloma acuminatum, which is also your venereal warts. So, yun. Kung ano yung, kung ano yung, ano, kung ano yung basta ito yun din yung tandaan nyo, kung ano yung classification or kung ano yung property ni Papova viridae, syempre yun na rin yung kay papiloma and kay polioma. Kasi under naman sila kay Papova eh. So, ano nga ba yung characteristics ni Papova? Alam natin sa DSD, ay sa lahat ng DNA viruses, double-stranded DNA siya, except kay uh, Parvo. Next, we have also your icosahedral. We also have uh, replicate within nucleus. Kasi si Pax lang naman yung naiiba. Eh. Uh, Papova, so paad pa. Non-envelope din. So, ganun yung ano, ganun yung siya aralin. So, may mga mnemonics naman ako bibigay later on. And ganun yung siya aralin, yung mga general properties ng viruses natin. Okay? So, now let's proceed to adenoviruses. So, bukod sa property niya, so, since parang wala tayo nabanggit na something unique kay adenovirus, kung ano ngayon yung general characteristics na nabanggit natin sa DNA virus, yun na rin yung kay adenovirus. So, it is a double-stranded uh, cubic or icosahedral uh, nuclear replication tapos, ano pa ba? Envelope? So, non-envelope. Uh, Paad pa. Add. And ang number one na kailangan nating alamin kay adenovirus is they are the ones that causes your conjunctivitis. So, yan. Particularly your kerato conjunctivitis. Yan. Next. We have your hepadna viruses. So, the size, uh, yun nga, hindi na naman mahalaga yan. 
and yung ano and yung wala na naman din tayo masyado na banggit na unique kay Nepad na eh. So double stranded ay ko sa hydral. Ah uh, he po so envelope siya. Ito pa ba? So double stranded DNA uh, hindi na hindi na banggit dito ayun nabanggit pala. Envelope. So yun. Hepad na virus. So dito classified si Hepa B. So ayan. Hepatitis B. So bigyan ko na kayo dati ng ano ng classifications ng viruses ng hepatitis viruses natin. While it is true that they are named as hepatitis viruses, it does not necessarily mean na classified sila sa isang family or genus. Uh, genus I should say. So Uh, meron tayong limang usually na na nagko-cause ng hepatitis na viruses. So we have your Hepa A. We have your Hepa B. Hepa C. Hepa D. And your Hepa E. So Hepa A Uh, this is classified under your picorna virus. So RNA siya. Picorna viride. Next, your Hepa B. Yun nga, yun nasabi ko na kanina. Hepadna viride. Uh, also take note, Hepa B is the only DNA virus dito sa limang hepatitis virus na to. only hepatitis na DNA in nature. So, Hepa, Hepa B. Hepa C is classified under your Flaviviridae. So, the rest, of course, are your RNA virus na. Hepa D, Delta virus or Delta Viridae. And your hep, uh, HEPA E is, um, tawag ba doon? HEPA E is HEPAVIRIDAE. Okay. So, dating classified as your CALICIVIRIDAE. Formerly CALICIVIRIDAE. So, yan. Uh, HEPA A, HEPA B, HEPA C, HEPA D, HEPA E. So, Picorna Viridae, HEPADNA Viridae, Flavi Viridae, Delta Viridae, and HEPA Viridae, HEPA E. So, minsan nasa pangalan na nila yung, ano, yung classification. HEPA E is HEPA Viridae. HEPA, HEPA B, malalaman mo siya yung only DNA kasi HEPADNA Viridae. HEPA DNA. So, HEPADNA Viridae. Yan. Only DNA na hepatitis virus. So, yun. Ito usually yung lima. Uh, yung mga different causes ng hepatitis, yung mga different names nila, ma-encounter nyo soon sa serology. Kasi ma-encounter nyo ulit tong limang to sa serology. Pero for now, ang alamin nyo muna, since we're only talking about your general properties, eh, under sila dito sa mga to. Okay. Um, also, ang kailangan yung alamin kay Hepa B is that wait tayo doon yung mga different body fluids na kung saan pwedeng mag-infect or pwedeng mag-cause ng infection si Hepa B. So, these are the different body fluids wherein Hepa B can be found. First is your uh, blood. Second is your semen. So it means to say pwede siya ma-transmit ma through sexual intercourse. You also have your vaginal secretion. You also have your breast milk. So pwede din siya ma-transmit sa baby. So body fluids were in HEPA B can be found. You also have your saliva. So, yan. 
Um, bigyan ko na rin kayo ng correlation sa blood bank. If you encounter patients with HEPA B, pag na-expose kayo sa HEPA B, ang deferral period nyo is one year. So pag sinabing deferral period, ito yung period na kung saan hindi kayo pwede mag ng blood. One year or 12 months. So deferral period for um, uh, donors with contact with HEPA B patients or living in household with HEPA B, usually one year. Pag ikaw naman mismo yung patient na, no, na, na merong HEPA B, usually indefinite or permanent. Uh, pag, for example, contact lang, exposed ka lang sa HEPA B, one year ang deferral period mo. Pag ano naman, pag um, tawag mo doon? Pag ikaw na mismo yung patient na merong HEPA B, uh, pwede permanent or usually permanent pero minsan indefinite. So yun. Yun lang yung kailangan yung tandaan for HEPA B. Okay? Uh, Nakaka-follow pa ba? Hello. Okay. Nakaka-follow pa kayo? Tinatanong kayo ni Sir Tom. Yes, Gusto niyo ba 5-minute break? Yes, yes, sir. Gusto niyo ba 5-minute break? Sige, uh, ano, bladder break muna 5 minutes. Ma'am? Yes, sir. Sige, sir. Ma'am, if ano po, if hindi po natapos ngayon, pwede pong ano, next meeting. Ha? If hindi po matapos yung lecture ngayon, uh, is it okay po if continuation next meeting? Sige lang to, walang problema. Okay po. Thank you, ma'am. You have your HEPAD na viruses. Uh, HEPA B. Yun yung usually kailangan nyo tandaan dito sa HEPAD na viruses. So, double-stranded, icosahedral, hehepo, so envelope. Yan. And usually, pag sinabing hepatitis, ang kailangan nyo ng organ na, na, ano, na tandaan pagdating dito sa virus na to is it usually affects your liver. Hepatitis nga, hepa. So, yun. More on liver siya. So, we also have your herpes virus. So, ito medyo madaming viruses ang kailangan natin tandaan kay herpes virus. So, herpes virus, hehepo, envelope. Yan. Uh, double-stranded din siya. And usually, uh, tawag ko doon, icosahedral or cubic. So, ito ang sabi dito, it can be uh, latent infections that may last for the lifespan of the host. So, ganglial or lymphoblastoid cells ang usually tinatamaan niya. So, ganglial or lymphoblastoid. Pag sinabing ganglial, uh, these are group of nerve cell bodies. So, usually parang may hint na kayo na ganglial, they usually affect your nerve cell bodies na katawan. So, yun. Herpes virus. So, pwede sila magtago dito sa ganglia or sa lymphoblastoid cells natin. So, we all we have these uh, different types of viruses pero mas magandang i-enumerate natin sila one by one. So, medyo naglalag ng aking whiteboard. Burahin ko na. Okay. So, we have eight her human herpes viruses which are found in the humans, of course. Kasi nga, human herpes na. So, human herpes virus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, HHV1. So, HHV1, HHV1 is uh, HSV type 1. So, this is your herpes simplex virus type 1. Herpes simplex. Simplex as in simple with X. So, herpes simplex virus type 1. So, uh, ang causative agent, ito yung causative agent ng gingivo stomatitis. Kasi we have two types of, ano, we have two types of uh, your herpes simplex virus. So, human herpes virus type 1. Ang type 2 naman is your human herpes 
uh, herpes simplex virus type 2. Siyempre, kung may type 1 nga, may type 2 din. And usually, this affects your genitals. So, para matandaan natin kung ano yung kinukos nila infection, uh, pag sinabing human herpes virus type 1 or herpes simplex virus type 1, ang kinukos nila is uh, infection of the oral cavity. So, gingivostomatitis. So, since siya yung nauna, siya yung nasa taas. So, yung, sino, sino ba yung, ano ba yung parte ng katawan na nasa taas? That is your uh, oral cavity, yung bunganga natin. So, siya yung nagkukos ngayon ng um, infection of the oral cavity, which is your gingivostomatitis. Next, we have, we have here also your herpes simplex virus type 2. So, since siya yung pangalawa, siya yung nasa baba. So, ano nga ba yung parte ng katawan natin na nasa baba? Genitals. So, yun. Human herpes virus type 2 or your herpes simplex virus type 2 which uh, causes infections in your genitals. We also have your uh, HHV type 3, your varicella, varicella zoster virus. So, varicella zoster varicella zoster So pagtanggalin mo yung word na zoster, yung varis yung varicella dito, this usually is your causative agent for chickenpox. So wag na kayo malilito ah. Uh, di porket tinawag siyang chickenpox eh and na siya sa pox viruses. No. Uh, chickenpox is caused by your varicella virus which is under your herpes viridae. Okay? So, uh, tandaan nyo yun. Chicken pox is a disease caused by your varicella virus which is classified under your herpes viridae. So, uh, for example, um, nagamot na tayo sa, ano, sa chicken pox. And then, tong si varicella, hindi natin eliminate sa katawan. Naging latent lang. Nagtago siya sa cells of the body. Pag tumanda tayo, magre-reactivate siya as your varicella zoster virus. So ulitin ko ah, um, mag, nagka-chicken pox ka, gumaling ka sa chicken pox, pero hindi mo na-eliminate lahat ng varicella virus sa katawan mo. Nagtago siya sa body cells mo, and then pag tumanda ka, wherein your immune system becomes weak enough, uh, this varicella virus reactivates as varicella, varicella zoster virus, which now causes yung tinatawag nating shingles. Yan. Shingles. So, varicella zoster virus. Uh, classified as your human herpes virus type 3. Uh, dati ko na kayong i-orient sa serological testing kay varicella zoster. So, for, for your uh, most common most common and easiest method to detect your varicella zoster uh, antibodies. So antibodies against varicella zoster virus ang dinedetect nitong method na to, which is the most common and easiest method to detect your varicella zoster virus, which is termed as your ELISA. So I think na encounter na to sa immunoassay, no? Enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA. Or this is basically known as your AIA, enzyme immunoassay. So, yan. Uh, most common and easiest method to detect your varicella zoster virus antibodies is uh, ELISA or AIA. Now, for your reference method naman sa varicella zoster virus, uh, we have your FAMA. your fluorescent antibody membrane antigen. So, yun. Fluorescent antibody membrane antigen, FAMA. That is the reference method for detecting uh, infections caused by varicella zoster virus. So, that is your human herpes type 3. Next, for your type 4, We have your uh, EBV, Epstein-Barr virus. So this is the causative agent for kissing disease. So yung mga mahilig mag-kiss dyan. 
We also have your uh, Burkitt lymphoma. So recall lang sa HEMA, uh, Burkitt lymphoma is ALL type 3. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia type 3. Rarest but the most poor or the poorest prognos prognosis na uh, type ng lymphoblastic leukemia. Burkitt lymphoma. And of course, other ang um, pinakakaman na disease ng kilala kay Epstein-Barr virus is your infectious mononucleosis. So infectious mononucleosis is caused by Epstein-Barr virus. So yan. Uh, ang karakteristik na, na inclusion body na ma-observe natin sa patients with infectious mononucleosis are your um, how old are, are your downy cells. So, downy. Minsan ginagamit pang labada. Minsan, inclusion body kay Epstein-Barr virus sa infectious mononucleosis. Downy cell. So, yan. Next, we have uh, type 5, which is your which is your CMV, cytomegalovirus. So, ang, uh, ang former name ni cytomegalovirus is uh, salivary gland virus. Yan. So, that's all for your CMV. And yun nga, um, recall lang, Recall. Ano na ulit yung ano? Ano na ulit yung ginagamit nating tissue culture for the cultivation of CMV? Parasite. Ano yung ano ulit yung ano ulit yung cell culture na ginagamit natin for CMV? Human fibroblast cell. Okay, uh, very good. So, yun, human fibroblast cell for CMV. Now, uh, there's another thing na, ano, na i-discuss ko with regards to your CMV. Another inclusion body na kailangan natin tandaan. So, given na na-discuss ko yung inclusion body kay Epstein-Barr virus, so, kay CMV meron din, and to other viruses na need natin i-discuss ngayon. Inclusion bodies. So, uh, if hindi nyo na, ano, if hindi na may pasag sa utak nyo ngayon, kahit i-take note nyo na lang muna. So, inclusion bodies, first, we have your Negri bodies, negri bodies, cause are which is found in your uh, rabies. Wait, mali. Yan. So rhabdovirus yung or rhabdoviridae yung ano yung family niya. Now we also have your, we also have your. Uh, Torres Councilman bodies. So Torres Councilman, as in council, councilman, tao, lalaki, councilman bodies. So caused by your uh, yellow fever, found in patients with yellow fever. Next, we also have your uh, Guarnieri bodies. Guarnieri bodies. Caused by your um, pox viruses. So, Guarnieri bodies. Pox viruses. Now, let's also have your Bollinger bodies. Caused by cowpox. Lahat ng mga information na sinasabi ko sa inyo ngayon, um, sila yung mga high yield na pwede nyo mabas sa board exam. So, uh, kung hindi nyo na ma-memorize ngayon, kindly take note na lang muna. So, for now, uh, take note nyo muna. Um, next is your cowdry inclusion. Cowdry inclusion. found in patients with um, herpes simplex virus and varicella zoster virus. So type uh, types, human herpes types 1 to 3. So yan, 
Caudry inclusion, herpes simplex viruses, and varicella zoster viruses. Next, we also have your Owl's eye inclusion. That is for your uh, cytomegalovirus. Next, we have your downy cell. Sino nalit si downy cell? Kaya may mention ko lang. Sino nalit si downy cell? Epstein bar virus. And last but not the least, we have your complex spots. Complex spots, hindi siya usually inclusion body, pero parang isa siya sa sign na nakikita in patients with measles. So, yan. Negri bodies for rabies, uh, Torres Councilman bodies, yellow fever, Guarnieri bodies, pox virus, Bollinger, ba Bollinger bodies, foul pox, as in foul, hindi yung foul na F-O-U-L, ah, F-O-W-L. Caudry inclusion, uh, HSV and your varicella zoster. Owls eye inclusion, CMV, downy cell, EBV, complex spot, measles. So, uh, tatlo na yung alam natin kay CMV. First, ang dati niyang pangalan is salivary gland virus. Second, siya yung, ano, siya yung focus dun sa cell culture na tinatawag natin human fibroblast cell. Third, siya din yung, ano, siya din yung merong owl's eye inclusion bodies. Uh, sa HEMA naman, pag na-encounter niyo yung owl's eye inclusion sa, sa HEMA, ang tawag, ang sakit na yun is usually your Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, yun. Sa HEMA to, ah, uh, pag, ano, pag sinabing owl's eye inclusion sa hematology, Hodgkin's lymphoma yung tinutukoy niyang disease doon. Kasi ang owl's eye inclusion is present sa Ridstein-Steinberg cells. Ridstein-Steinberg, eh? Basta yung, yung cells din na present sa, sa, sa kalimutan ko na spelling, Ridstein bird cells ata. Basta yung tinatawag sa patients with Hodgkin's lymphoma is your Ridstein bird cells, Steinberg, Steinberg, malala ko na. Ridstein bird cells, which has an owl's eye inclusion. Pero pag virology ang pinag-uusapan or microbiology ang pinag-uusapan, owl's eye inclusion um, depicts the presence of your CMV, cytomegalovirus. So, yun. Ito yung mga inclusion bodies na kailangan natin tandaan dito. Okay? So, balik tayo. CMV, um, salivary gland virus, and it also has owl's eye inclusion in patients with um, infections na may CMV. So, yan yung uh, human herpes type 5. Human herpes type 6. Ano na ulit yung alam natin kay human herpes type 6? Causative agent siya nung 6 exantem. So, ano yung 6 exantem natin? Rosciola infantum. Or otherwise known as exantem subitum. So, yun. Uh, very good no for, no for reciting. So, human herpes virus type 6 causes now your Rosciola infantum or your exantem subitum. Sometimes, ang kinokos din siya ni herpes type 7. So, for her human herpes type 8, ang kailangan nating tandaan kay type 8 is that it is the one that causes uh, Kaposi's sarcoma. Pero ano ah, uh, huwag kayong malilito. While it is true that it is causative agent of Kaposi's sarcoma, ang most common na causative agent pa rin ng Kaposi's sarcoma is your HIV. So, ito yung most common pa rin. Most common causative agent for Kaposi's sarcoma is your HIV. Pero uh, it's good to know also that human herpes virus type 8 also cause Kaposi's sarcoma. Okay? So, yan yung meron lahat kay... Uh, tawag ba Kay herpes viridae family. So, recall lang. HHV1 or herpes simplex virus type 1, uh, oral cavity infection, herpes simplex virus type 2, genital infection, varicella zoster virus, shingles, reactivated na varicella virus, uh, herpes type 4, 
Epstein-Barr virus, casing disease, Burkitt lymphoma, and infectious mononucleosis, which has characteristic downy cell appearance. So inclusion body yan. Next, uh, CMV, salivary gland virus, yung former name niya. And it is your, uh, it, it causes yung, ano, yung tinatawag natin, house eye inclusion na, na, na inclusion body. Balik tayo kay uh, her, human herpes type 1 to 3. So herpes simplex virus and BZV, they are exhibiting cow dry inclusion bodies. So yan. And we also have your type 6, no? Paposis, ay, sorry. Type 6 is your Rosola infantum and also your type 7. Type 8 is Kaposis sarcoma. Pero most common pa rin for Kaposis sarcoma is your HIV. So that's all for your uh, herpes viruses. Next, we have Pax viruses. So ano na yung alam natin kay Pax viruses? It is the only DNA viruses that replicate in the cytoplasm. It is also known as your large, largest DNA virus and also your largest virus known to man. Okay, so wag nyo kakalimutan yun. Largest DNA virus or largest virus known to man is your Pax viruses. So, yun. Um, Another is yung double-stranded DNA niya. Actually, ano, itong particle structure dito which is complex, uh, ang, ano, ang usually na complex na dito is yung parvo. So, yun. Of course, within the cytoplasm, largest din siya na, na DNA virus and double-stranded DNA yung yung kailangan natin tandaan sa kanya. Okay, so ang, ang alam natin kay pox viruses, uh, human pathogens are your small pox. So, small pox, ito yung dating pandemic na na-eradicate uh, na, ngayon. So, small pox. Vaccine niya is yung cow pox. So, ito. Monuscum contagiosum, that is another human pathogen. No? So, we have your variola major. So, yung variola major, yung, ano, yung smallpox. So, smallpox. Pero we also have your variola minor. Ang causative agent nung, ay, ang kinukos nitong variola minor is alastrim. Dito na lang. Alastrim. M. So, variola major, small box, variola minor, alastrim. So, yun yung kailangan yung tandaan for pox viruses. So, I think for next meeting na lang po muna to, ma'am, itong RNA uh, viruses. Sige, sir. Pero, apa. Pero ano ma'am, ang discuss ko na lang muna ngayon is yung general property ng mga RNA viruses ma'am. So, ah, sige. Before we, ano, before we leave. So for your RNA viruses, mas madami to. Kanina, anim lang yung DNA viruses. So ang general characteristics na RNA viridae, RNA viruses natin are they are usually single-stranded RNA. They are usually helical in appearance. They are usually enveloped. They are usually, uh, they usually replicate in cytoplasm. So ito. Siyempre, may mga exemptions ulit dyan. Pero mas marami ngayon. So, uh, RNA viruses, they are single-stranded, helical, uh, envelope, and they replicate in cytoplasm. So, these are some of the different unique characteristics ng ibang viruses sa RNA. So, most of them are helical. Some are icosahedral. Sino-sino sila? 
So, icosahedral, um, ang mnemonics ko dyan, pical. Pical pla or pla. Pical pla. Si Reyo. Wait, wait, wait. Nirereto ko pa man din yan. So, nirereto ko pa man din yan. So, pikal, peke. Pekal. Pikal plus si Reyo. Nirereto ko pa man din yan. So, yan yung icosahedral viruses natin. P, picorna. Viridae. Cal, calisi. Viridae. Pla, plavi viridae. Reyo, reyo viridae. Uh, re, retro viridae. Dalawa kasi yung re. So, yung isa reyo, yung isa re na lang. To, toga viridae. So, yan yung mga different families of viruses that are icosahedral in nature. Pical plus reyo, nirereto ko pa man din yan. So, picorna, calisi, plavi, reyo, retro, and toga viridae. So, yan. They are icosahedral in nature. Next, uh, so most of them are enveloped. These three are non-enveloped or naked. Ang other term ng non-enveloped is naked viruses. So we have your PCR. So for your P, again, si Picorna. So dalawa nang alam natin kay Picorna. Uh, ay ko sa hydral siya at the same time naked. So C for Kalisi. So dalawa na rin ang alam natin kay Kalisi. Um, ay ko sa hydral and naked na rin siya. Tapos yung R dito is Rayo. So, dalawa na rin yung alam natin kay Rayo Viridae. Ay ko sa hydral siya at the same time naked. So, PCR. Naked. So, at sinabi din dito, they replicate within cytoplasm except for the two. So, replicate within nucleus. Uh, wala akong mnemonics dito, pero sige, OR. Orto, orto mixoviridae, sila yung mga influenza, and your retroviridae. So itong retroviridae, sila yung, siya, siya yung under dito si HIV, na kung saan, uh, yun nga, causative agent siya ng AIDS. So ito yung general properties ng, um, tawag ba doon, na RNA viruses natin. So kung kanina, merong smallest and largest DNA, Dito rin merong smallest and largest RNA. Pero take note, given na si ano kanina si um tagudun, smallest DNA yung ay smallest virus noon to man si Parvoviridae. Mas maliit pa siya kaysa dito sa smallest na RNA. Ang um, smallest na RNA natin is your Picorna viridae. Viridae. So, from the term pico so, under, parang ano siya eh, parang um, under siya sa SI units natin na kung sa antiko is yung mas maliit na, na measurement. So, mas maliit pa siya kay nano. And yung ano, yung RNA, yan o, picorna. So, smallest RNA. So, parang yun na rin yung ibig niya sabihin. Picorna viridae. Specifically, ang tinutukoy niya dito na species na pinakamaliit talaga sa RNA virus is your entire virus which is classified syempre dito sa picorna viridae and ito yung smallest syempre meron din tayong largest largest na RNA is your paramyxoviridae yan so largest and smallest so largest is your paramyxo Building. And another thing to consider, 
may may encounter din kayo soon na uh, arbo viruses. So arbo viruses dito, um ito pansin natin tong arbo. Yung ibig sabihin ng arbo dito is arthropod. So arthropod. Tapos yung BO dito is bore. So kung expand natin yung pangalan niya, arthropod borne viruses. These are viruses that are carried by uh, arthropods as vectors for disease. So that's all for the general properties of uh, RNA virus. And itutuloy natin yung mga um, unique na, na RNA viruses next meeting. So are there any questions? Clear by topic? Yes, po, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, Ma'am, thank you po. Thank you very much, Sir Tom. So uh, we'll just have the continuation after the academic release. So thank you everyone for your attendance this afternoon. I will just uh, send the lecture later on. And Sir Tom, thank you very much. We hope to have you next time. Sana, sana wala ka pa rin pasok sa, ano, <laughs> sa anatomy ba? Okay, yes, so yes, well, keep well. safe. Thank you, Tom. So keep safe, everyone, and keep safe or stay safe. And uh, a, a blessed Holy Week to everyone. Holy Thursday na bukas, then Good Friday. So do have an academic relief. You need that. We all need that. But of course, you should be uh, energized after the academic relief. Okay, so good evening or good afternoon, everyone. Sir Tom, thank you very much, Ulit. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you.